Lizard Wizard by Jay Wilburn. Lizard clung to the outside screen on the corner window of the house. It wasn't dark outside, but the light from inside under the cover of trees attracted the bugs. There was no magic in this process, but it was the way of nature, which was truly the core of all magic. A fat moth landed several inches away. This would call for a choice. Lizard could wait patiently or spring for his next meal. The winged insect circled about his landing spot with sluggish movements of a night creature puttering ab around during the day. Lizard might be okay with springing uh, on this slow prey. Instead, he lifted one hand and whispered the words of it, the first spell he ever learned. The, mouth, the moth jiggled in place a moment. It paused, a pause followed, and then more jiggling. It opened its wings and fluttered up from the screen, looked like the spell had failed. Then the moth flung sideways into Lizard's grasp, and as quick as a frog's tongue, he stuffed his prize hole into his mouth and swallowed it down with a smile. He still had it. His smile wavered as he mumbled to himself with moth wing dust on his lips. What do I still got exactly? Clearly, Lizard was magical, especially compared to other reptiles in this part of the world. But what good was magic without adventure, without a mission? As he studied the, the art behind his gifts, he read of magical creatures of old. Griffins, unicorns, tiger slugs once walked or flew or slithered across the earth. Now Lizard had no idea what lay beyond the yards and woods he could see from this screen. What was he meant to do with all a nuthatch landed on, a, on the cinder block embedded in the dirt below Lizard's screen? All his muscles tightened as he prepared to flee from a predator. The, small, the smaller bird with its blue-gray wings and the black stripe through its eyes on its otherwise white face was no threat to him, just a surprise. What kind of lizard are you? the bird asked. Lizard tilted his head one way, then the other. I'm green. The bird made jerky movements, surveying the lizard above him with one eye and then the other. That is your color, not your kind. Lizard opened and closed his mouth a few times, but didn't come up with another answer for the bird. Are you magical? Who's asking? I'm Nutch Hatch. That's my kind and my name. Do you prefer a list of my colors? No, that's fine. Are you a magical lizard? Are you indeed a wizard? Lizard looked from side to side to be sure none of his friends were around to hear. He declared, I'm the most powerful wizard in these parts. He had never met any other wizards, so he could only assume what he said was true. Nuthatch hoped, I'm sorry, hopped closer to the edge of the cinder block. If you were a wizard, as you say, I am part of a party in search of a magic user. Would you be interested? I'm in, Lizard. I'm in, Lizard said as he leapt down onto the cinder block next to the nut hatch. I haven't any, even explained what we. I don't care, Lizard said. I can tell by your stripes you are a warrior, and I know you are going on a quest. I've waited my whole life for a quest. Let's go. Let's start adventuring. The nut hatch said, Don't you even know, want to know what we are questing for? I'm sure it is a treasure. We'll split it when we get it. Lizard hopped down onto the dirt, so let's go questing. Nuthatch hopped along, leading Lizard across the yard. The bird kept ducking its head at things on the ground, sc scattering leaves into the air. Lizard spit out dirt that landed in his mouth. It was hard for him to remember to keep his mouth shut when he was excited. He wondered if he should have packed something. He did not have many possessions, but he might need something. Having never been on an adventure before, he had no idea what that something might be. Adventurers needed to pack light. He was surely he had he was surely packed light. A hat would be nice. Lizard always wanted a hat, but other lizards made fun of wearing hats. A hat like the great wizards of long ago that Lizard had studied might be nice. Something slithered toward them and the bird froze in place. The thing moved again with scales the same color as the ground and dead leaves. A copperhead, not Hatch whispered. Fly away, Lizard said. I'll run. Use your magic, Wizard. We are partly we are a party on a quest. We can't keep running. Suddenly, Lizard couldn't remember a single spell. He lifted both hands as the snake drew closer. He started half a spell and got tripped up in the middle, so he finished with the end of another one. Stars sprinkled out of his hands and swirled around them. The snake stopped. It stared with its dull eyes and only saw the top half of two water jugs floating in the air. 
It was quite used to its poor vision deceiving it. It sniffed the air with its tongue, but only smelled plastic. Copperhead decided it must really be the top halves of two floating jugs, so he, it slithered away. Nuthatch said, that was amazing. What spell did you cast? Lizard took a deep breath and said, I think it was a mix of illusion and invisibility. Well, it was great. Keep that one ready. The bird hopped away on the ground. Lizard followed and tried to remember the two parts of spells that he had just patched together. They passed some squirrels and the lizard yelled out, Hey guys, I'm going questing. They looked up. One said, You're out of your mind. Nuthatch stopped pecking the ground and said, "You could, We could use a thief if any of you are interested. The squirrels exchanged look, looks and a second one said, You're both crazy. They chased each other up trees and the pair of adventurers moved on. At the edge of the next driveway, they met a chipmunk and a dove. This is the wizard I was telling you about, Nuthatch said. Is he as powerful as you thought, Dove asked. She held a sword in one wing. Nuthatch said, he fought off a copperhead just now. That wasn't exactly true, but Lizard thought it best to let it go. Chipmunk held a bow and arrow as he asked, is he okay with the terms and payment? Nuthatch tilted her head and her head at Lizard and then said, sure, he he is completely on board for whatever. Then let's let's away, Dove said. The party moved out from lawn to lawn as the sun sunk deeper behind trees. The birds occasionally flew up to see what might lie ahead and then returned to the ground to travel with the others. The cry of an owl froze them in place. We're in the open, Lizard said. We need to go for cover. No time, Chipmunk drew back his bow. An owl dove toward them and took a, a small arrow through the feathers that did not slow him at all. Lizard babbled through a spell that he had to start over three times. When he finally coughed out the last of the fire spell, it came out as a sheet of glittering stars. The light dazzled the owl who veered off and flew over the nearest house. Its hoots carried through the air, sounding like shrill rolls of R's. <clears throat> Excuse me. Should we stop for the night, Chipmunk asked. Dove said, we are too far from the yard we know. We must keep going. So they did. As night grew thicker, they entered the woods beyond the neighborhood. The trees were full of sounds of life and hunger, ranging from insects up through the deepest calls of the largest predators. The yip of dogs drew closer and closer. Lizard whispered, why aren't they inside in their beds at this hour? They don't have houses or bed, Nuthatch said. Those are coyotes. Lizard had heard their calls before and always assumed they were dogs. He had never seen a coyote and wondered what they thought about the flavor of green lizards. Hide us, wizard, Dove said. What's that? Conceal us from the coyotes. Lizard racked his brain for that patchwork spell he had used earlier. He did his best to piece it together again. A bright light surrounded and spread its glow through the trees, casting deep shadows out from, from them in every direction. The odd little dog things that Nuthatch called coyotes stopped out at the far edge of the light. To Lizard, they looked like the kids' drawings of dogs that he always saw on the fridge through his old window and screen. Everything about their shape was weird. Do you think this will work? Chipmunk asked. It has to, Lizard responded. He wasn't sure the others really understood what he meant by that, but they started moving again anyway. The coyotes trailed them for hours, but finally lost interest and peeled away from the moving circle of light. Other predators dove in to attack, including bats and even some owls. The other three used their weapons to dissuade the predators, who eventually gave up. Because of the brightness floating over them through the night, they missed the fact that morning was dawning. They left the trees in that morning light, just as the magic glow around them finally burned off. That was amazing work, Dove said. I'm glad you're on this quest. The others agreed. Lizard said, It's really good. That's really good. I'm exhausted. We should find a place to rest, Nuthatch said. We can fly up and see what is around us, Dove said. Before they took off, a cat meowed from a few feet away in the yard. A dog, a real dog, but one that seemed suspicious of the group of small animals, growled from another direction. Before they could deal with all that, a black snake slithered into view. Fly, Chipmunk said. We'll deal with these. Will we? Lizard asked. Nuthatch said. We are a team. We fight together. Do you have any magic left up your sleeves, Dove asked. Lizard swallowed a couple times. He didn't have any sleeves to have magic up, but he got her meaning. 
He felt empty, but started speaking every spell he knew. Small sparks and weak stars flew from his fingers, but nothing more than that, as the other animals closed in on, on their sides. I can help, a small voice said. The others looked around for who had spoken. Then Lizard spotted a ladybug on a blade of grass above their head, above his head. It shuffled from the grass to the nearest leaf of a drooping, flowering weed. The bug wore the tiniest purple hat Lizard had ever seen. He thought if he survived this, he ne he should get a hat just like that, like just like that one for himself. What can you do? Dove asked. Lizard spoke over the top of her. Whatever you can do is welcome. Ladybug spoke words Lizard had never heard and could not remember. A blast of light brighter than the sun exploded out in every direction. The air crackled around the ladybug. Ice crystals formed on the leaf where it stood perched and spread down over the weed, hardening it white. The attackers lifted in the air and flew away. Only the cat landed well, but all three left the scene in a hurry. That was amazing, Lizard said. Are you looking for an apprentice? We still have a quest, Nuthatch, Nuthatch said. Lizard nodded. Are you interested in going on a quest? The ladybug put away his purple hat as he left the frozen leaf for the blade of grass again and said, We all have quests of our own. You four are doing fine. With that, Ladybug walked away. It took a really long time for him to climb down the blade of grass as the others watched. Nuthatch said, We've had plenty of adventure. Let's find a place to rest and recover a while. Their quest continued.